What is up heroes, this is Minute Zero, and welcome to week four of the CFL. This week we are going up against Austin, coach of the Virginia Volcaronas. Austin is a friend of mine who I've played quite a few times in leagues in the past, and he is an incredible competitor. A lot of it is, in my opinion, due to his mindset. His mentality is trained around competitive fighting games, and it reflects quite a bit in how he approaches building a team, improving from match to match, and then of course actually playing. And that makes him a very, uh, very difficult opponent to beat. So. Let's talk about his team. Overall, it's very offensive. Uh, you can see he's got a couple dragons. He's got Salamence and Flygon. He's got Excadrill, Magnezone, Grimmsnarl, and Rotom Wash. And Salamence uh, is a really impressive Pokemon. Access to set up with Dragon Dance, great offensive moves, both physically and specially, uh, with coverage like Fire Blast and Hydro Pump, but then also Earthquake and Aerial Ace and Outrage and fly, uh, it can also defog, roost, it can wish pass even, it can do a whole bunch of different things. It can be a great sweeper, thanks to the ability Moxie, but it can also act as a defensive pivot, thanks to Intimidate. So, very scary Pokemon. Uh, I know he tends to run choice sets on a couple of his Pokemon each week, so we'll see how that goes. I know he's run, I think, Specs or Scarf Ments in the past, but we'll see. That's a difficult Mon to prepare for. Excadrill, also a massive offensive threat. Uh, it's got great overall bulk and a decent speed tier. It has great abilities in terms of Sand Rush and Mold Breaker, uh, meaning it can hit most things that would get some assistance from their abilities. It can set up with Swords Dance. It has speed boosting ability with Rapid Spin. Two great stab moves in Earthquake and Iron Head. Overall, incredible Pokemon. Uh, it can also get some cool coverage moves like X Scissor or... I don't know, uh, Rock Slide <laughs> or Rock Tomb. Uh, I can run bulky sets with Stealth Rock, which I should actually note, this Pokemon is his only Stealth Rocker on the team. So he tends to run that, I would think. But we'll see. Next up is Magnezone. Magnezone is actually one of the most problematic Pokemon for my team because of the advent of Body Press. Uh, it's generally a good Pokemon for trapping Steel types. It can hit really hard on you know the uh, special side with it's stab, electric, and steel type attacks. You can get momentum with Volt Switch, yada yada yada. But the big difference is it recently got access to the move Body Press, meaning it can utilize Iron Defense and Body Press to break through special walls, which makes it really difficult for my team to handle. So we'll we'll see what we can do about that. Next up is Grim Snarl. He tends to use this as most people do, which is to set up Light Screen, Reflect, Taunt, and then maybe get a little bit of damage as kind of like a bulky, but still, you know maintaining some sort of damage output uh, Pokemon that supports the rest of the team, but it can also set up with Bulk Up and try to sweep teams itself. It has access to Priority and Sucker Punch. It's a very scary Pokemon, so we definitely need to be careful. Next up is Rotom Wash, a great defensive pivot. Um, I mean, Rotom Wash hasn't really changed that much over the generations, has it? It still tends to run Hydro Pump and Volt Switch, maybe Will-O-Wisp or Toxic, maybe Thunder Wave. Maybe Discharge, uh, it tends to run Pain Split or Defog. It can be pretty speedy and offensive. It can also tend to be bulky on, on either side. And yeah, it's a bit of a pain to deal with. <laughs> uh, Flygon is also a very, it's another mixed dragon type like Salamence, right? It can hit really hard, well, not super hard, but it can hit hard on the physical side or the special side with access to stuff like Earth Power, Dragon, or Dragon Claw, um, Outrage, Draco Meteor, Fire Blast, did I already say that? I think, maybe. Um, and it can also get a, uh, get some momentum with U-Turn, which I think is important. It can also set up a Dragon Dance, and I think, did it get access to First Impression? I don't, I don't know, I should actually check that before the battle. But, it also has Defog, and it's a good Pokemon? I think it also gets Defog too. He's got a lot of hazard control on his team. As you'll see with the next Pokemon as well. Uh, Tentacruel is another Rapid Spinner. It's really fast and surprisingly offensively present, and also a good bulky support Pokemon. Its only weakness is that it doesn't have reliable recovery. And so it tends to, it can set up Toxic Spikes, it can Rapid Spin, it can Haze, Scald, uh, it can run Swords Dance, or, you know, it has a decent special attack, so it can utilize that. And yeah, like I said, its main thing is that it's a bulky Pokemon, but it's still quite fast with a base 100 speed. Similarly, Talonflame, uh, this Pokemon is most problematic if it's going to run a like taunt bulk up set or some sort of stall breaker, which he may bring, although Austin tends to bring more offensive teams, 
So we'll see. Uh, it has only a base 81 attack, infamously lower than Amoongus's attack. However, it has access to two great stab moves in Flare Blitz and Brave Bird, and the ability to boost with stuff like Flame Charge or Swords Dance or Bulk Up. And of course, with at full health due to its ability Gale Wings, it has priority on its flying type moves which means it's a very scary Pokemon to handle, has access to reliable recovery and roost, and can also get momentum with U-Turn. Tangela is actually a, a Pokemon he holds very dearly, uh, but I, I've used it once before. It's a great defensive wall. It has Regenerator, it can Sleep Powder things, Giga Drain, Leech Seed, Toxic, etc., Synthesis, um, but it's very really weak on the special side. It can utilize its base 100 special attack and stuff like Leaf Storm or Ancient Power or Sludge Bomb, can also knock off, which makes it a little bit of a hassle to deal with, but it's um it's decent for sure. Sneasel is kind of weak, honestly. Uh, it's got great moves, you know, knock off, ice shard, icicle crash, but it's just it doesn't have much in terms of offensive presence. But maybe if it runs something like Swords Dance, it could be a real threat. So I need to watch out. Ursa Ring can hit really hard, if, especially if it's guts, uh, guts boosted, you know, based off of a 130 attack, especially coming from you know, like to stab facade after already uh, being toxic or burnt or whatever it may be, um, Ursaring can hit super hard. It can also get really fast with something like Quick Feet, so I always need to watch out for that as well. But its main, I guess, weakness is that it's slow, so we need to be careful uh, because it can hit really hard on the physical side once it's fast. In terms of Haunter, it can actually hit surprisingly hard. It's really frail, but it has base 115 special attack. You can throw a Life Orb on it. Uh, it can Nasty Plot now, I believe, as well. And it gets access to some decent stab moves like Shadow Ball and Sludge Wave and Dazzling, or Dazzling Gleam doesn't stab, but it has good coverage as well. So, very threatening team. Very threatening team and some decently bulky Pokemon too that could give my bulky Pokemon a difficult time as well. So I actually had quite a bit of trouble building for his team, when I first looked at it, I didn't think it was going to be too difficult, but the more I looked into it, the more trouble I was having. But here is the end result. The first Pokemon is Hawlucha. Uh, we're bringing the same set as we did last week, except we're bringing an adamant one, just because I didn't feel the need to outspeed anything. Um, anything I would be outspeeding by going timid or jolly, uh, I wouldn't be planning to stay in against anyway, so I was fine with that. We're running the same set in terms of sub SD with Citrus Berry just because it's reliable in terms of being able to set up for yourself. And at plus two, um, Halucha puts in a lot of work. So yeah, this could be a cleanup sweeper or just something to tear some holes in his team. Next up is Galarian Rapidash. I was so upset with Galarian Rapidash after last match, but we managed to make it through. And honestly, the coverage is too good. Uh, Play Rough Zen had button high horsepower, hit so much on his team super effectively, it's crazy. I considered running Megahorn or Mystical Fire for Tangela, but it wasn't quite worth it. Uh, same with potentially Wild Charge for Talonflame. And I was also torn between the last move being Swords Dance or Morning Sun. I think that one of his ways of handling Galarian Rapidash might be to try to wear it down with Life Orb Recoil and put it in range of some other attacks. So I figured rather than try to, if I were to get a prediction right on a Switch or a Sucker Punch or something, if I were to go for Swords Dance or Morning Sun, I think I would appreciate Morning Sun more in the long run. And there would only be a couple things that I would outspeed after he, um, I guess, like switched them in. And they already get two KO'd, so I might not even necessarily need to SD per se. So, yeah, uh, we'll give it a go. Hopefully, it hits. <laughs> Hopefully, it hits. Rillaboom, I'm very happy with this set. We'll see if it actually works. It's kind of out there, but. It's something. Uh, it is a bulky sub Leech Seed set with Grassy Glide and Knock Off. The HP is there for overall bulk. The attack is there to get two KOs with Grassy Glide on Excadrill and Flygon, with, even if they have a little bit of HP investment. The defense is there specifically so that I don't get bodied by even uh, plus two Adamant, Life Orb, Excadrill, and I can take that thing down. It's also there for potentially subbing up on Grimmsnarl, which is nice. And the rest of the bulk pretty much went into Spideff to, ha to help with uh, Magnezone and to help with Rotom Wash's hits potentially as well, and to not get obliterated by a mixed Salamence or mixed Flygon too. So yeah, uh, this Rillaboom could put in a ton of work. Basically, it's a great uh, Excadrill switch in for me, and it can 
It can set up Leech Seed on most things and whittle away at them with Substitute. Behind a Substitute, I mean, with Grassy Train Recovery plus Leftovers Recovery plus Leech Seed Recovery, Substitutes aren't even really doing that much damage to me, and they're chipping away at my opponent who doesn't have very reliable recovery. And especially if I'm able to get up Toxic with some of the other Pokemon or, you know, chip away with Hazards and stuff, uh, like some of my other Pokemon will set up. It could put in a lot of work in the long run. I can also knock off opponent's leftovers, items, etc. And then potentially even sweep late game with Grassy Glide, because I do have a little bit of attack. So we'll see how this set works. I'm really, really hoping it'll be helpful. Uh, oh, I should say the the speed is there to outspeed a modest Magnezone, which is what I think he'll bring if he brings it. Uh, just because there's no real reason for him to run max speed <laughs> looking at the rest of my team. So... That's the rationale there, and I don't want to get slammed by Analytic, or I want to be able to hit him before he can hit me with Analytic, Analytic Life Orb or Specs attacks. So that's a Rillaboom. I'm nervous about bringing this type of set, but hopefully it works. Then there's Umbreon, which is doing the typical Umbreon thing. I was really torn between special and physical defensive investment, but ended up going with Max Fizz Def just because the special bulk is already so great. I love this Pokemon so much so far, and Basically, this thing is a great answer to a lot of his physical attackers where they just can't afford to set up on me because I can just click Foul Play over and over and take them down with me. I can Wish and Protect to heal myself and then hopefully spread Toxic on the couple things that do come in and handle it pretty well. Namely, Talonflame or Tangela or, um, I don't know, Rotom Wash. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we'll see. Uh, but... Yeah, this thing could be a really great pivot and could potentially heal up other team members like Rillaboom with Wish and Protect and, and so forth. Blissey is doing the usual Seismic Toss, Stealth Rock, Soft Boil, Teleport. Teleport is there to get Galarian Rapidash in pretty safely. Same with uh, Rillaboom or even Hawlucha. And then Stealth Rock is there to chip away at things Soft Boiled for my own recovery and um, Seismic Toss just to damage pretty much most other things. I don't think Blissey will be particularly helpful, just looking at his team, but it will be nice to have a round to set up hazards, to potentially sponge a couple attacks, and to potentially um, get a safe switch into some of my other Pokemon that can put in more work. And then lastly is Ditto. He has a lot of good Pokemon on his team. I'd love to see what types of sets they're running. It will make my life a lot easier if I know what type of Magnezone he has, what coverage his Excadrill has, what type of Salamence he has, what type of Rotom Watch he has. Etc. Information will be incredibly helpful because of the versatility of each of his Pokemon, so that's mainly why I'm bringing it. It also helps against potential set of sweepers like Flygon or Salamence or Excadrill or Grimmsnarl. So, yeah, I need to be very careful about, uh, you know, or I force him to think twice about setting up. It can also potentially help with beating Talonflame if it's a bulkier set. So, yeah, that's the team. Overall, I like it. I'm not super confident, and I really kind of had to get creative, in my opinion, to to come up with something I feel has a good shot. Uh, Austin's a great battler, and so I know it'll be a tough match no matter what. And let's hope we can do it. But until the battle, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.